Serious, people who have accidentally killed somebody, how did it happen? Oh something I can contribute to, the year is 2009, January or February and I'm in Puto Rico. We're out one night drinking heavily and leaving Church's Chicken in Los Angeles located in a less than ideal neighborhood. We're walking along being jackasses to the H propositioning us when we hear somebody call to us in English. We turn around and there is this mid-twenties blonde, pregnant woman maybe about 5 feet 3 inches. She comes running up to us oh thank god you speak English. My car is out of gas at the station by the corner and my card isn't working and my husband isn't answering the phone. Hold up we cut her off and circle up discuss whether it's a scam, or if she legit needs gas, and we decide to be decent human beings and kick her a few bucks each. We hop on the next bus and we're out of there. The next morning we get contacted by authorities asking about an incident right by the bus stop. The lady never made it back to her car. Some guys had seen us hand her the money and as soon as we got on the bus grabbed her and beat her to death. So by being not a dong for once in my life I got a woman killed. Struck their vehicle with mine. Didn't see them. Husband was decapitated. Not wearing a seatbelt and he had been drinking. I was 18. 5 years of depression and heavy drug abuse on my side. I still wish I could change it. I tried telling the family I was sorry but no response. The screams that day from the wife lay in my nightmares for eternity. Life happens. It wasn't me directly but I lived in kind of a rough neighborhood and one day my friend calls me and says these guys have been following him and he was getting freaked out and wanted to come to my house to chill for a bit before walking back home. He was about a mile or two from my house. Asked if I could walk out and meet him so he didn't have to walk alone. I told him he was crazy and he was imagining things. Well turns out he wasn't crazy. He was beaten to death after he put up a fight when they tried to mug him. I couldn't believe how selfish I was. Was depressed for about a year after it happened. Now if any one of my friends call me for help, no matter how big or little them problem is, I help. Hopefully you're still not hung up on this. You could have been there too but not changed the outcome. When I was 9 years old, one of my sister's ex-boyfriends decided it was a great time to shoot up our apartment door. He fired 9 times, missing most of the people in this 3 bedroom apartment in the slums of South Phoenix. My sister was there at the time with her new boyfriend. She grabbed his gun as he left out of a window, and started to shoot back at this guy outside of our door. She stops shooting, and I hear a thud. She's hurt on the ground, and the guy is still outside yelling, calling her a BS whatever. I picked up the gun, went to the barred window next to our front door and pointed and shot. Gun fell from my hand. I fell back. He fell down. Didn't get up. It was labeled a self-defense. My mom was gone. And I didn't even know my older sister was there with a dude. I just woke up to all of this chaos. I don't think about it anymore. But I don't feel guilty about it. You protected yourself and your family from attempted murder. I'm glad you lived and he didn't. My dad is a locomotive engineer and every 5 to 10 years he will hit someone. Usually they are drunk or committing suicide. Not much you can do to avoid them except blow your horn. Can relate. You never forget it. When I was 12 there was a marathon for school fundraising. It was a casual affair. Many parents walked along with the students. The trails weren't really marked off, but there was a little map they handed out. Many parts of the marathon were on bike paths and through paved walking trails. We were allowed to ride our bikes, as many of us were young kids. At one point in the marathon there was a little footbridge, maybe 20 feet long over a little creek. It was landscaped and arched in such a way that if a short person was at one side of the bridge, that person would not be able to see someone on the other side of the bridge. The bridge was not very wide, barely enough for three people walking abreast. The decking was made of old warped 4x6 timbers or something. They may have even been recycled railroad ties. The sides were heavy duty metal. Very sturdy. This bridge is in a park near where a parental unit lived at one point. And I had been up and down the trails and over the bridge many times. My friend and I found that if you got enough speed on the bridge, there was a timber near the apex that you could hit and lift up on your bike and catch what felt like some serious air for a 12 year old. We could get maybe 5 feet of distance, but only a few inches of lift. So during the marathon, my friend and I come around the corner and see the bridge up ahead and of course we decide we are going to jump it. 
we race each other as fast as we can to be the first over the bridge while passing walkers and other bikers. The next part is fuzzy in my head. I spent so much time as a young person stricken with guilt that I told myself lies, made up imaginary situations, went back and forth blaming everyone else and myself. I guess I can only tell you as much as I know for certain. There were two young kids on their bikes crossing the bridge at the same time. I was over the bridge first, popped my bike over the crest, and my eyes went wide as a man on a bike was coming the opposite direction. He juked out of the way of a couple kids flying through the air, lost control and plowed into the two younger kids. This was before the era of strict bike helmet rules. I don't think anyone involved was wearing one. The two kids experienced serious injuries. One later died in the hospital from head wounds. The other had a broken arm. That was the last year that the marathon was run. Our schools took bike helmets far more seriously after that. I blamed myself and I wish I could trade places with that kid. Give him the life I robbed of him by being a reckless idiot. The experience had helped make me into a somber shutdown of a teenager. I missed a huge chunk of socializing and learning about social situations. And those effects have carried over into the rest of my life. I sometimes wonder how my life would be different if not for that day. Maybe I'm reading this wrong, but it sounds like an accident. There was a grown man riding his bike the opposite direction of a bunch of kids on a bridge doing a school-wide race and there was a collision. I don't get how it's your fault. After my dad dropped me off at high school one day, he went missing for about 10 hours. The drive to school from my house is in the countryside and while my mom and I were driving home we passed my dad in his parked car that was in a lot adjacent to the road. I didn't see him and he died from heat exhaustion. That was 7 years ago and it's still difficult knowing that if I saw him when we passed the road that maybe he would have lived. The worst part was that when we were at home waiting to hear from him, my cell phone rang and it was from his phone. I will never forget the short lived happiness I felt because in that moment I thought my dad was okay but it was only a firefighter informing us they found him. I'm sorry for your loss. Throw away time. This happened 20 plus years ago, so the statute of limitations is up. I think I ran over someone. I was going to a school dance. I was driving through a heavy fog when I felt something that made me think I'd run over large branches. I kept going because, by golly. My car kept going and honestly, where I'm from, it wouldn't be unusual for large branches to be in the road. They found a body in the road later. I don't remember the full details, but they said he'd been I think, heavily intoxicated, dragged into the middle of nowhere, and left for dead in the middle of the road. If I recall correctly they charged his friends with murder. Given the circumstances, I think they wanted him dead and tried to make it look like an accident. They publicly asked for information. I kept my trap shut because I was ignorant. I thought I'd get a manslaughter charge since I'd just turned 18. You can get up to 10 years of prison for involuntary manslaughter where I live, and law enforcement had been cracking down at the time. I found out later that when they examined the body, he'd been run over multiple times, and to the best of my knowledge, nobody came forward. Certainly nobody I knew went to jail, and I know other people from my area went down that road that night. To be fair, he could have been long dead before you hit him. It's the friend's fault, anyway. I'll make this short as I'm on a mobile. The 18th of December 2012, while coming home from work a motorcyclist lost control of his bike, crossed the center line and went head on into my car. We were both doing 60 kph. Roughly, I had no time to react or swerve out of the way. The image of him coming straight at the car will forever be burned into my memory. He died 30 minutes later in hospital. You didn't kill him. He lost control. He died as a result of that. Not your fault in the slightest. I didn't do anything except train a man the way I was trained at work. Which was wrong. He was cleaning printing industrial printing rollers with Aston beside it of light when a spinner kicked on throwing the Aston at him in the light. The light sparked the Aston and he was engulfed in flames. He ran and tried to roll but he took two extinguishers to put the flames out. He was burned over 92% of his body he was put into a coma for a month but when he woke up his heart and lungs stopped working. His lungs when burned from breathing in the flames. I said frick the job told the company I needed more money to do that crap or I wanted laid off. Also his family got close to a million dollars from his death. 
money from workers comp and his incurrence. A lot of places don't realize how dangerous these chemicals are. I work at a solvent distributor and some of the corners they cut are terrifying. My boyfriend and I were living together and he had severe depression most of his life. We started having arguments and I went to stay at my mom's house. He had a gun in the house which he recently bought and I didn't get rid of it. I came home a couple days later and he was lying on the bed and he had shot himself. I don't think I will ever forgive myself for not getting rid of the gun. In junior. Hi. My best friend told me he was thinking about committing suicide. I had a long discussion with him about it and thought I had changed his mind. Hey. I was a kid. I considered the matter done and never told anyone. A month later. His mom found him hanging from a wire hanger in his closet. It wasn't your fault. He reached out to you and you helped him the best way you could. I'm guessing it seemed like you talked him out of it so you had no way of knowing he still wanted to do it. We were on the scene of a fully involved residential house fire. The fire depth is small and we do what we can with what we have, not necessarily in line with the official guidelines for firefighters. Three of us were doing the initial search and rescue. County fire. Crawl to my voice if you can hear me. I was clearing a room when I heard one of the other firefighters. Let's call him B. Say he had somebody. After that was a blur. I was heading toward B when he ran past me and suddenly I heard several loud pops and I'm yelling that we had shots fired over the radio. So of course I hauled butt. Does anybody know what sound fire on wet wood makes? Apparently what happened is the man was sitting in a recliner threatening to shoot B if he didn't get out of the house. Bear in mind, this is a 1800-ish square foot 3 bedroom house that is fully involved now with exposed flames. Supposedly the man swung on B and went to reach for something. That's when the fire licking the wood heated some trapped water, turning it into steam, popping the wood. It's been treated as a possible assault, not charging anybody with anything, although that man burned to death in his home. Investigation showed later that there was a weapon in the house but no ammunition. Although the autopsy revealed the man was very inebriated. B goes to counseling pretty often but is slowly getting better. Loud noises cause him to have some issues. He honestly believed he was being shot at. I almost killed someone. Still very traumatic so I hope this counts. When I was 20 I had this girl come and visit me. Me, my roommate and her drive to get get food at about 9pm. I'm driving with her in the passenger seat going down a four lane road and I'm on the inside lane. Right when I'm going by a van or truck with a canopy. Oncoming in the inside lane, a big man takes one step out from behind the oncoming vehicle. I freaking drilled him. His head goes through my windshield and slams on my dash right in front of me. I slam on the brakes and he rolls off and onto the road. I hear his friend screaming so I run to him and call 9. 1. 1. He kept trying to get up while we were keeping him down. He started bleeding from his nose and ears and was mumbling incoherently. Cops and news people came. This was a pretty small town in Oregon so this was big news. Luckily I had about 9 people stay and tell the cops what happened. Otherwise I feel like I would have been fricked. Obviously the guy's friends and family tried to pass all the blame on me. The guy was drunk. Dressed in dark clothes at night and ran across the street about 75 feet away from a crosswalk. He ended up getting a ticket. Pled not guilty but never went to court. I saw a picture of him in the hospital and he had a huge dent in his skull. Not sure what his exact injuries were though. This really fricked me up for a couple years. I've always been a great driver. Never had a crash before then and haven't had one since. After this happened I would get anxiety and slow way down every time I drove through a crosswalk. Anytime I saw a pedestrian I wouldn't take my eyes off of them until I passed. Six years later and I still think about it constantly. I feel terrible for what happened to that guy. From what I saw I assume he has some serious lasting injuries. I looked up the news article online and in the comments section his family and friends attacked me. Saying it's all timid tortoise's fault. He's an immature boy who was speeding which I wasn't. I really wanted to apologize but I knew that probably wasn't the best idea. I really hope that man made a full recovery and is living a good life. Sorry for any formatting issues. Type this from my phone. I guess not directly killed, but perhaps I could have stopped it. My parents were in this weird separation state and it had been super volatile for about 6 months. It got physical one day, my dad goes to jail, and then to my grandma's house, 
and mom stays in the house until September. She had gotten a restraining order, but then decided to get it rescinded. Success. But then she moves out. My dad was super depressed during this time. Maybe he was hoping they would work things out. But she had already started seeing someone else apparently. Butthole had enough courage to show up unwelcomed at the wake. It was around Christmas. And I was out with a friend and her mom. I came back home. House was totally dark. No one answering the door or the phone. Come to find out the next morning why. My mom had apparently come over to get some cookware to cook that butthole boyfriend a meal. And my dad, who had already been really deeply depressed, just lost it. He shot my mother to death, and then killed himself. I was out with a friend while my parents were dying. I slept at my friend's house, right next door, while my parents were dying. I was 8. I still haven't forgiven myself for being there, because maybe it wouldn't have happened if I was. It's almost freaking 4 in the morning and it's been several years, but I'm sitting here sobbing. I freaking hate Christmas, and it's even worse since my grandma, who always called me every year on that day to make sure I was okay, passed away in January. God freaking damn it. Where I live, every time stuff like this happens the dad kills the kids too. Don't be so hard on yourself. I was walking around New York with a camera bag filled with a few thousand dollars worth of equipment. It was at night and I was walking down a dim lit street alone. I walked by this dude standing next to a doorway and I hear him tell me to stop. I turned around and looked and he had a gun pointed at me. A bit shocked, I froze for a second. He told me to hand him the bag, so I started to take it off my back. As I reached over to give it to him I kicked him in the stomach and he stumbled back a few steps and I kicked him again a few times till he fell. He went to point the gun at me again and I tried to wrestle it out of his hand but I couldn't get it loose. I forced him to point the gun towards himself and I forced the trigger down. With his finger still on the trigger, he died right there. When trapped in the Alamo in a NASA rear, I shot a shot a young boy who snuck through militants bring us some water. I can't forget. I was driving in an unnamed foreign country, where people crossing highways are common, and a someone stepped in front of my car out of nowhere and I hit them just as I slammed on the brakes. At first it was really hard to cope with because the person came out of nowhere, and at highway speeds there was no way that person survived, but eventually I realized that there was literally nothing I could have done to avoid that situation except for not drive on that highway. So now I just live with a really severe case of existentialism, but don't we all at some point? If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe, I publish new videos every day, until then, check another video. Bye for now.